Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, part by coming on the podcast where we talk facts over feelings. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I got another one for you today. But before we jump on in, thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Pound the like button, hit the bell, become a member of our channel for our membership content, as I'm going to start a membership live on a weekly basis. It is coming. It is going to come from, I'm debating on the day of the week, but there is going to be a scheduled membership live every single week. Be sure to find check out our posts for when that will be, and it will consistently be at that date and time. But we'll just shoot the shit, all right? So become a member today. Same time, please go over to Rudy's Rants and subscribe over there. Gino, 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 Gino. Gino Ariema, man, he really has a bone to pick with Caitlin Clark. He really doesn't like her very much. And he can't get out of his own damn way. And right now, he seems to have memory loss. Is senility, is sen- senility, that's the word I can't pronounce. Is being senile setting in for this man? Because he doesn't remember what he said a few months ago about Caitlin Clark. Most recently, he was on a podcast called Make a Difference Pod, which has Phil Martelli and a young kid with him. I don't know who this is, actually, so I am not going to speculate who this guy is. I don't know him, um, but I will link it here. Phil Martelli and uh, a young guy. I don't know his name. I apologize, but I will link it, and hopefully we can help help your channel grow as well. So be sure to go subscribe to that channel. But let's just jump on in on this one because Phil Martelli asked about Caitlin Clark, and this is what Gino, Gino, Gino had to say about our beloved Caitlin. Check it out. Where are we going next? And and if we think that, uh, you know, one kid, you know, one Caitlin Clark is going to be enough to to take this where it needs to go, it's not. Or one Paige Beckers. I agree with him. I agree with that. I said, you need more than Caitlin Clark to make this last. You do. But there's no one else like her. That's the problem. Paige ain't her. Paige is not like her. And that's the problem. But he's right. You need more. You need a continuation of talent of that level. And I'm sorry. Like I said in my other videos today that I dropped, Caitlin's up here and Paige is way the fuck down here below my screen. They're not on the same level. You need multiples up here who make people watch your product. But let's keep on going. It's not. What they do is they show you the way. They show you what's possible. And then the people that run the operation have to now capitalize on it. And then the younger generation, the high school people, have to prepare these kids so that when they get to college, we have something good to work with. And then we send them up to the WNBA. And then they have something good to work with. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So it still comes back to uh, those of us that are in charge of the game. Are we making the game better every day? Are we making our players better every day? And are we preparing them? You know, and in so many more ways than just scoring points. I think one of the things that makes Caitlin Clark, you know, who she is, is the way she is with people. You know, she connects with people and people connect with her. Now, she talks a lot of shit on the court. (laughs) All right. Believe me. Now, when people talk about in WNBA, why are these people beating up Caitlin Clark? Because she talks a lot of shit on the court. All right. (laughs) That's what makes her good. So she's not like this, uh, you know, angel walking around there and everybody else is beating her up. No, nah, she, she's got a lot to say. She's a lot like Paige. Those guys have a lot to say. They just do it subtly and they're tough. And so, you know, we need more of that. And we, 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 need, more, we need more great games. We need more, more uh, better games. We need, uh, we need more rules modifications. So just like the... the All right, let's, let's finish that right there. This man is crazy. This man, and this man is crazy. That's not what he said a few months ago, and I'll play that for you in a second. 
That's not what he said. It's not at all what he said. In fact, he 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 made a lot of other statements about Caitlyn, and none of them had to do with she talking shit, her talking shit. Last I checked, I mean, I've watched a whole lot of WNBA this year, and I will tell you that every single woman out there talks shit at a very high level. Kelsey Plum talks shit. Asia Wilson talks shit. Angel Reese talks shit. Skylar Diggins talks shit. Sabrina Ionesco talks shit. Brianna Stewart talks shit. Kennedy Carter talks shit. They all talk shit. They all run their mouths. John Quill Jones, Brianna, did I say Brianna Stewart already? Yeah. Like, like, like what are you talking about? Diana Taurasi? Kyle Copper? Jewel Lloyd? I don't even really see too much of Nafisa Collier talking shit, though. She seems a little bit too nice. But what are you talking about, my guy? Hey, they purposely tried to take her out. That's what you're saying now. So you're lying. You're lying because three, four months ago, that's not what you said. So now it's she had a target on her back because she talks shit. And she's not an angel on the court. For which you also said that Paige Beckers talks shit. And she's not an angel on the court. You just said that. They're both tough. You, Of course, you keep comparing. See, this is why I did my other video on st Stop Comparing Paige to Caitlyn. Because they're not in the same stratosphere. But as you see, another example of comparing Paige to Caitlyn Clark. They're not the same. Paige Becker's going to the WNBA is not going to make one extra UConn fan watch who isn't already watching. Paige Becker's going to the WNBA is not going to make one extra college basketball fan watch who wasn't already watching. So you can keep lying to yourself about what will do it. It'll take more players like CC. That's it. More transcendent players when it comes to skill and ability. So you sit here and say that she's loved by the fans because she connects to people. Yeah, she does connect to people. She doesn't walk around bitter. She doesn't walk around ang angry. She doesn't walk around complaining. She doesn't walk around uh, advocating. She doesn't walk around talking politics. She walks around playing ball, smiling, signing autographs, and being responsive to fans. She doesn't dog out her opponents. She doesn't talk shit about them on, 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 on mics. She's not said one singular negative word about any opponent she's faced on a microphone. But they have said plenty of negative things about her. And I don't hear that same shit coming towards Paige Beckers. I don't hear that same shit coming towards Sabrina Ionescu. I don't hear that same type of talk coming back to Brianna Stewart or Navisa Collier or Cam Brink or Ain even Angel Reese. You get that on Angel Reese from the, from the outside world, not inside the WNBA. You don't get any of that. The only person who's being constantly told that she's not shit by players in her league is Caitlin Clark. And yet she's better than all of them. She's better than all of them. This man's going to sit here and talk about she's not an angel on the court. She talks trash. Every player I've ever seen play basketball at a level like this in the men or women's game talks trash go to the local park they talk trash so that makes you a that makes you a target to have your head clocked to be body chucked on a dead ball is that what it, is that what you're saying Gino is that your newest version is that what you're making up now I do agree in order for the women's game to get to the next level, you need players like Caitlin Clark, because at some point it will it will flatline. In fact, I think it's already flatlined. If you want to be, if I'm going to be completely honest and transparent, I don't think next year Caitlin Clark regular season games are going to draw two million plus on a on a weekly basis. A few of them here and there will. You know, Indiana against Chicago will still probably draw two plus million, presuming you put it on. 
regular television. You don't throw the game on a Friday night, which is a horrible business decision, in my opinion. That's a game that should be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a, su- a Sunday or something like that, where you know people are home and watching television. But you're not going to have some meteoric rise in viewership next season for the WNBA. It's not going to happen. They're not going to go from an average 1.2 million to an average 2.2 million. It's not going to happen. The novelty of Caitlin Clark is going to dry at some point. It's going to cease. Because she is still a novelty to people watching the WNBA. At some point, people will grow tired. I'm not saying it's immediate, but you're not going to, again, what I'm saying is you're not going to see some meteoric rise in viewership if you don't bring another player like her because she has her fan base. Her fan base will make her a multi, multi multi-millionaire. Will her fan base make everybody else multi-millionaires? No. They've they've shunned her. They've turned away against her. They don't want to acknowledge her. They're not going, Roman Reigns, acknowledge me. They're not, they're not acknowledging her. So if you look at what Caitlin Clark's fans do for players that acknowledge Caitlin Clark's impact, guess what? They take care of those people. Look at how Erica Wheeler's foundation skyrocketed when Caitlin Clark said two nice things about Wheeler later in the season, how she looked out for her. She got tons of donations. From whom? Clark fans. It's reality. But let me show you what Gino said a couple months ago. Here we go. I'm going to link also this video in the bio where I did talk about, I reacted to this video with his interview with Dan Patrick. So I'm going to link that. If you haven't seen it yet, please do check it out. I did a whole long thing on that one. That was pretty lengthy. But here's a clip from that where Gino doesn't remember what he said a couple, a few months back. I guess the old age is kicking in, my guy. If you listen to the beginning of this vi- that, that that interview in, in the Martelli show, he's like searching for words, man. It, it's like he forgot what to say. He doesn't remember what happened yesterday. Simple question. What, what brings back memories of the days of Bishop Kendrick or whatever the school that they both coached at together? And he sat there like this. Uh, the, uh, 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 uh. If you watch the whole thing, you'll see what I'm talking about. The man is not as sharp as he used to be. But listen to what he said here, since he clearly forgot. Yeah, I think you and I both know the landscape that we live in today, both um, sports-wise and non-sports-wise, right? We are in a red, blue. And if you're red, you can't agree with blue. And if you're blue, you can't agree with red. Whereas most things are in the middle. If you're a college player and you're a great college player, like Caitlin was, the delusional fan base that follows her disrespected the WNBA players by saying she's going to go in that league and tear it apart. They were actually, ah. I'm going to stop it there. The delusional fan base. This is what he refers to people who are WNBA fans now. Because of Caitlin Clark. This man is anti-growth of the game. It's crazy. He's anti-growth. He has bothered himself at the attention and admiration that people have for Caitlin Clark. He's bugged out by it. He It pisses him off. In fact, losing to her in the Final Four pissed him off even more. Because guess what? Caitlin Clark, by herself, beat his five McDonald's all Americans who were on the floor. And she he and he she beat them with a team of decent players. No other McDonald's all Americans on her team except for her. He didn't recruit her. He didn't want her. And he's she's better than his best player. This man has a a, a bitter pill in him. He's pissed. The fans disrespected the WNBA. Homie, my guy Gino. Did you see her numbers? Man, you made some dumbass comments because you don't seem to recall. I'm sorry, this happened while you were talking about her. 
But at the same time, let me get bring you to speed now what she did. Oh, fuck, rookie of the year. 66 of 67 votes. Oh, dang, first team all WNBA. My goodness. Fourth in WNBA MVP voting. Should have been probably second if you ask me. I thought she should have won it, by the way. I thought she should have been at least second. I don't think there's any way in hell you tell me Brianna Stewart was better than her. Her impact on the team, on the game, in the league, just on the court. Forget about all the other stuff. She had the biggest impact of any player in the league this year on the court. She changed the franchise basketball-wise. Forget merch-wise. Basketball-wise, she changed the franchise. This man is 19-plus points a game, most points in history by a rookie, led the league in assists, most assists in WNBA history, Six, almost six rebounds a game, shot over 40%, 41%, led the team to a 20-20 and 20 record, a team that had not made the playoffs in eight seasons. I think she did do exactly what the delusional fans said she would. In fact, if she had had a better coach, they probably would have won 25 games. If she had a better coach, she probably would have averaged 23, 24 points per game. Because she wouldn't have been so hesitant to shoot the ball early on. But hey, you keep that energy, Gino, because we'll keep playing this ridiculous dreck out of your mouth to prove how senile you might actually be. Odds on what are, like, she's third or fourth in betting odds on being MVP at a WNBA. Oh, shit. Third or fourth. Gino, she finished fourth. She finished fourth in WNBA MVP voting. Damn, we're fucking delusional. You fucking idiot. You're the fucking coach for 25, 30 years, and you are a buffoon moron. You don't even know your own for 40 years. You don't even know your own sport. You're so fucking blind to reality. I'm going off now. You're so blind to the reality. You don't even know your own goddamn sport because you can't see the forest from the trees. You haven't won shit in eight years. You forgot how to win with the best players in the world. Sorry, in the country for college students. You forgot how to win. Getting your ass kicked every year by USC. USC South Carolina, by the way, not USC Southern Cal. Dawn Silly's mopped your ass up the last five, six years. She surpassed you as a supreme coach in women's basketball, in college women's basketball. And yet you still have 11 this year, 11 McDonald's All-Americans on your team right now and three national players of the year. If you don't win this year, motherfucker, retire because you suck. Retire because I'd be embarrassed to have that level of talent on my team and lose. Bro, this guy don't even know his own goddamn sport with the bullshit that comes out of his damn mouth. He is so wrong, yet he has not jumped on anywhere to say, Caitlin, I salute you. You proved me wrong. You're a badass motherfucker. You killed it this year. You changed the league. You made people turn on the television. You were incredible. Nah, nothing like that. No, he says this bullshit that he said earlier in the video. She talks shit. That's why they fucking came at her. Get out of here, bro. Every woman in that league talks shit. And no one gets a No one drew as many flagrant fouls this year called than she did. And if you called the ones that should have been called that weren't called, it probably would have been about 10. You must be bugging, motherfucker. You disgust me. You're supposed to be a, 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 a proponent of people like Caitlin Clark. You build them. You, pro, you prop them up. No, you'd rather dog her down because you want to prop up Paige Beckers. 
or Diana or Brianna. And Caitlin Clark's favorite player of all time, she has said, it's Maya Moore. She acted like a little kid when she saw her this year at one of the games, the one game in Minnesota. Are you kidding? Yeah, she finished fourth in the MVP voting. So we were all delusional, you stupid twat. Hey, these people are so disrespectful and so unknowledgeable and so stupid. That there we go. This is the fan base of the WNBA now. Disrespectful, unknowledgeable, and stupid. Well, guess what, motherfucker? We're more knowledgeable than you. A man who's coached college basketball for 40 years. We are more knowledgeable than you. I'm glad I replayed this video because this got me going again. And I, I want you to check out the rest of that, the, the full response to this trash. But this is another response because now the season's over. And now she showed what she was. And now you see all the awards she won and all the records she broke and all the firsts that she's done, of which none of it will ever be touched. None of it. None of it. Because there's no one like her. And I'm not blowing Caitlin Clark. I think Caitlin Clark's the most incredible women's basketball player I've ever seen. What she does has never been done and will never be duplicated until we start seeing young 10-year-old girls doing stuff and working on these things from the time they're young kids. And even if you do work on it, it doesn't mean you'll ever be able to do it the right way. Delusional, disrespectful, unknowledgeable. Just call everybody a whole bunch of names, Gino. I know it pisses you off how wrong you were. That it gives women's basketball a bad name. Okay. So the kid was set up for failure right from the beginning. She didn't fail, homie. She didn't fail. She dominated the fucking league as a rookie. She wasn't set up for failure. She dominated. I guarantee you, your beloved Paige won't sniff the numbers that Caitlin Clark put up this year. So if you're a WNBA player, and I believe me, I've coached the best, and I've pissed them off a lot, and they let me know about it. But they were tremendously disrespected. And none of them are going to say it. But human nature is, okay, this kid's coming into the league. And Diana said it best. This kid's in for a rude awakening. Ah! A rude awakening. She dusted Diana Tarazi's old sorry ass. She beat Diana Taurasi's team three times. You dumb fuck. I'm cussing on this one a lot. I don't give a damn. This dumbass here, she said it best. Rude awakening. Yeah, you tried to beat her up. You tried to, you targeted her because you were jealous. Let's keep playing this rest of this. 45, 50 seconds of ridiculousness out of this moron's mouth. I got no respect for this guy anymore. None. None. He's a clown. And they all jumped over her, but they didn't read the whole thing that she said. But nobody's printing. You know, Diana Taurasi was right. She was wrong. Move on. This kid's on the wrong team. She's got... Wrong team. Oh, shit. They made the playoffs, you fucking idiot. First time in eight years. Wrong team. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. All right. She made she gave she helped Kelsey Mitchell have the best year of her career. Yeah. Wrong team. At the wrong skill set to wrong skill set handled the physicality of that league. The physical you mean the fouling. You mean the fouling. You mean the, the dirty play, right? Physicality or the dirty play? Which one? You mean the eye gouging? You mean the body checks? You mean the clotheslines to the face? You mean the tomahawk chops by Marina Mabry in the playoffs? Talking about that? Is that what you're talking about? The dirty, the dirty shit, or 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 the physicality? Because there's two levels. Of, there's there's levels. There's physicality and there's dirty. She experienced the dirty. Fuck out of here. And she's a rookie. And if you're a WNBA player, if you're any kind of player, you're gonna say, "I'm gonna make a statement." Targeted, targeted by society, targeted by her looks, targeted by her reputation, targeted by the disrespect that they've shown to the WNBA, 
there's a huge target on this kid's back. I thought Cameron Brink said something really smart. She said, no, they're expecting this rookie class to be perfect. This rookie class isn't even one of the best rookie classes in the last 10 years. He's a fucking buffoon. Angel Reese would have been the rookie of the year last year. In fact, let's do this again. I did this experiment, this 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 thing before. Uh, let, let, let's do this again. Let's do this again. Angel Reese would have been the rookie of the year last year. She might have been the rookie of the year the year Ryan Howard won it. She absolutely would have been the rookie of the year in 2021. He would have been the rookie of the year in 2020. So in three of the last four seasons, she would have been the rookie of the year. Yeah. She would have been. And she finished second in this particular class. She would have been the rookie of the year. The Michaela Onyenwari averaged eight and a half points. Ryan Howard averaged 16, but she didn't put up. The, but she shot worse than Angel Reese did. She shot 36% from the field. Angel Reese averaged a double double. Yeah, Angel Reese would have won the Angel Reese would have won the rookie of the year last year over Leah Boss, and she'd have won the rookie of the year over Ryan Howard. She would have won the rookie of the year over Onion Wary. Danger Field. Hell, she would have won the rookie of the year that year that Nafisa Collier won it in 19. I don't the only year that I think she doesn't win the rookie of the year over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 years would have been the year that Angel Wilson won in 2018, and maybe, maybe the year that Brianna Stewart won in 2016. I would have said that she would have won the Rookie of the Year over Tina Charles, Angel McCautry, Maya Moore, Neka Agumake, Elena Deladon, Chini Agumake, Jewel Lloyd, Alicia Gray, Nafisa Collier, Krista Dangerfield, Michaela Onyewari, Ryan Howard, and Aaliyah Boston. Angel Reese would have won the Rookie of the Year every one of those seasons for sure. Asia Wilson's the only one that would have won that year that award for sure over her, and Brianna Stewart maybe. And if you go 16 years, that's Candace Parker. She finished second. In this class, the class is fucking idiot says this isn't even the best class. Isn't that good of a class? <laughs> and, and and Caitlin Clark would have won the rookie of the year over every single class in the history of the league. In the Caitlin Clark would have won the rookie of the year every single year since 1998. She averaged the third most points. In the in in the history of the of the rookie class, she averaged the most assists by a mile. She she shot the highest from the free throw line. I'm sorry, Dangerfield shot a little bit better. Whatever. She's she she contributed the most points that you've ever seen in the history of the WNBA. Highest percentage you've ever seen in the history of the WNBA of her team's points. I get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this guy's an absolute moron. I, I mean, it's amazing this man's been coaching so long. But they've been put out to be that because the way social media is today. So what kind of impact is this rookie class having in the WNBA? <sighs> boy, 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 boy. I'm confused, you know, which one is it? She was targeted or she talked shit? Which one? She talked shit or she's targeted? Which one? He said she talked shit. Now it's that she was targeted because her fans, her fans, her delusional, stupid, unknowledgeable, moronic fans put her in a position to fail. She doesn't have the skill set for the team. She's on the wrong team. She's this, that. And she's not physical enough. They're physical. Blah, 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 blah. No, nah, motherfucker, you're a liar. You're, you're a liar. You're a liar. You lied. The truth, the truth was in your first interview. The truth, they targeted her. 
because they're jealous. They're jealous. And it's not because of Caitlin Clark's fans that they're jealous. They're jealous because she's got the attention they could only dream of having because she's just that much better than all of them. And he's going to sit here three, four months later and say it's because she talks shit on the court when everyone in the league talks shit. This guy is an absolute buffoon. And, yes, she connects with people. You're right. She does. People love her because she's nice. He's a clown. He's a clown. Gino Ariema is a, Gino Ariema is a clown. It's time to retire, Gino. You have one last chance to win with your loaded ass team. You added another national player of the year, Sarah Strong, who's going to be your second leading scorer and potentially your best player. Yeah, she might actually be better than Paige Beckers. Right now, she's 18 years old. You're loaded with talent. And yet you're ranked second behind South Carolina because people expect you to lose to South Carolina again. I don't know if you play them this year. I presume you do. Oh, wow. I just saw that Kentucky came back and beat Duke. Wow. I guess I guess Cooper Flag's not going to go undefeated after all. <laughs> uh, people find out what it's like to play against the big boys, and it changes things. Let's take a look here real fast. Rankings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does UConn play South Carolina? I figure they do. They always seem to. They do not. Oh, yeah, they do. They play them. They play South Carolina at South Carolina on February 16th. They have a schedule this year, bro. Like they have, they always have a schedule. They have a schedule schedule. They play, they play Car North Carolina's ranked 14th. They played Louisville's ranked 18th. Notre Dame at Notre Dame was ranked sixth. Versus Iowa State ranked eighth. Versus USC ranked third. That's the game with Paige and Juju on December 21st. And then they play their conference. And then they play South Carolina late in the season. Let's see what you got for South Carolina this year, Gino. If you can't beat them this year, you might want to hang it up because you surely, you're surely, you are surely showing your old age. And the bitterness. You you sound like a Karen. You sound like a Karen. I'll call you a kin. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord, and my Lord. Gino Ardiema, my goodness. Make up your mind. She's targeted or she she's talk shit. If you only had the balls and the decency and the stones and the, the class and integrity, because we know you don't have any integrity or class, but if you had the class and integrity to get on a microphone and say, man, Caitlin Clark's a badass. I was wrong. She did everything I didn't think she could do. She destroyed those women this year. She was incredible. You know how many fans you might actually gain? That's the biggest problem in the WNBA. It's the biggest problem amongst all the problems that this league has. It is the re the the not the reluctance or the that's not the reluctance. Is it the reluctance or the fact that these individuals who have critiqued her at such a high level will never come back and say three words. I was wrong. They can't do it. They won't do it. By now, you've seen videos of me talking about Colorado, Dion. I was wrong. Colorado's a good football team. Dion Sanders has done a fantastic job this year. It's that simple. Is he going to win the Big 12? I don't know. Should he get to the championship game? Yeah. I was wrong. When you have integrity and class and dignity, you can admit when you were wrong. Gino Ariema has none of that because he can't admit that he was wrong. The players in the league who compete against her won't admit that they were wrong, except for the fact that they're begging her to play in the unrivaled league because they know she's the one that brings revenue. What happened is just saying, 
I was wrong. But that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Pound the like button. Ring the bell. Jump on over to Rudy's Rant. Subscribe over there, too. I'm going to link these two videos, this, this video and the podcast in the description. What do you think? Let me know. Facts over feelings. This is Rudy's Rant from Come On Now, the podcast. Come on now.